How do you get from here to there? How do you push paint around in such a way that it begins to go from the exterior to the interior, from denials to delineations? I recently had the opportunity to sit down with Morgan Russell, a local Hingham painter. This is one of his works. We had a great conversation. Listen in. Hello, Morgan. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm glad to have you here as our guest on Harbor Interests. And you recently had an art exhibit here on Sunday, the 27th of January. Tell me about it. Well, I approached Marianne Blackmer at the community center probably a couple of months ago. And she, she suggested that I do this show and I've been getting ready for it. Um, there are paintings in the show that are two years old, but almost everything in the show has been worked on in the past two years. There are some older pieces, but then I've worked on them in the past year, so some, sometimes I just bring up things and, and keep working on them. But I, it's all been hung. I gave myself two days to hang the show, which was good. I knew there would be changes that I made. I made a whole big piece of paper with measurements of the walls and the lengths and at home for like a week I said I'm gonna put this painting here and I said all the paintings where they would go and then I come in on Thursday and that just went out the window because I would change every the position of everything so when you see it in real life when you see the painting on the wall it doesn't look the same as what you plan out on a little piece of paper now, but I'm, this, mm -hmm. I'm very happy with the way it looks and I was excited to, to have it. Was this your first exhibit here at the uh, Hingham Community Center? It was, yes. Yep. Now, you are a longtime resident here in Hingham. Yep. In fact, you are a graduate of Hingham High School. That's right. Um, can you share with me some of your early experiences painting um, here in town? What was that like for you? I still remember every art class I had in junior high and uh, in, in sixth grade, we moved here in sixth grade. I remember art projects I did in sixth grade, which is funny because I have conversations with a great friend of mine uh, who I went to school with here in Hingham. And he says, do you remember this? Do you remember so-and-so's party? Don't you remember that? And I said, mm. but I remember every art project I did in almost every class I, art class I had. Uh, but I would say by the time I got to college, the last year in high school and college, I don't think I was, art kind of took, not a backseat because I did major in art up in college at St. Michael's College, but I, I became a little bit less serious about art probably in my early 20s and then I, the interest really ramped back up when I was 25 or 26. How would you describe your early um, art expressions and compare and contrast that to where you are today? Well, I've always enjoyed art. I remember even when I was a kid, my mother had me in these after school art programs. There was something new. This was down in the New York area when I was second grade. Um, but it was just something that I think all kids are, you know, drawn to creative outlets drawing and painting and stuff like that. But uh, when I did really become serious about it, 
I was studied and I eventually moved to New York and studied at the Art Students League and I, I became a really very detailed realistic painter and that was probably well, 15, 16 years ago is the most detailed and then slowly you know uh, you begin to loosen up and you don't think about it just other things attract your attention and we have these uh, paintings that from the show now that are the result of that. Morgan, tell me about some of your travels as part of your, your education and your evolution as a painter. Well, um, it was 1991 and I uh, applied for um, a summer study abroad program through Parsons School, in, in, uh, which is in Brooklyn. And I got in and, uh, and I went and it was so thrilling. I'd never had a passport before and preparing to go and you, you know, they wanted you to get a little French easel, you know, you hold with the handle and it folds up. And uh, I went and we were in the end of June, I think we left. And we were in Paris for a whole month, which was mm -hmm. thrilling. Uh, I had a painting class in the mornings on the street. We would set up our easels and, and just paint in different locations. And in the afternoon, I um, took this art history class that this woman uh, taught. And she was brilliant. Um, I think her name was Renee Covalucci or something. The first day we met in a classroom, and then, then she says, well, this is how we uh, get to the Louvre. Um, oh, I think then we went together halfway through class, and then she said, tomorrow we're going to meet here. And I think we were in the Louvre five or six different days, and then we went to so many museums over the course of a month. It was absolutely thrilling. And then after that, if you know, how can you top it? We went to uh, Italy, just near Florence, just... Um, a little town called Cortona, which is, has lots of fascinating Etruscan ruins around it. And uh, we went to on different side trips to um, see some gorgeous frescoes. Let's talk a little bit about the medium. Uh, what's your choice of medium? What's your favorite, most comfortable medium to work in? Oil paint. Um, the first real oil painting I did was in college up in Vermont and uh, I enjoyed it and I've worked with other things watercolor I think is very good to to do to loosen up every once in a while I would try watercolor and I really respect artists who work in watercolor because it is so demand you know you when you make a mistake that's it you either throw it out or you just you know, you have to have such great confidence, I think, to be a, a really good watercolor artist. Oil, I, I like the idea that you can go back to it, you know, the next day and scrape something out or a couple of weeks later and paint over something that's dried. It's very um, versatile medium and, you know, that's just, there's something about it. They say that um, oil paint was invented, well, what? 500 years ago or something like that to paint uh, the hu human flesh, you know, which really makes sense when you when you look at some of these old master paintings or Titian or something like that. And uh, I just, you know, fell in love with just what I could do with oil paint. And your influences, some of the painters, the oil art painting, the, the, the artists who worked in oils, who were some of your early influences? I remember when I was just out of, probably in college and, and just out of college, I just loved Monet. And, um, well, I'll get some other influence, but, uh, and then I remember telling people, being so excited about Monet, and I went down to, with my family and some cousins to the Metropolitan Museum in New York. There was a huge Monet retrospective, probably in the mid to late 80s or something like that. And, uh, 
people would say, oh, Monet, you know, he's so old hat. But then, of course, I was drawn to many, many other painters, you know, after that. But just recently, I was thinking the way my work is now where I'm getting more and more paint on the canvas, it, if I go up to them in the past year, close, I would think to myself, well, this reminds me of like late Monet, where the, uh, you know, water lily paintings are all crusted with paint, but it's, you know, you could see light in there too. But um, oh, Edward Hopper, I was in love with earlier uh, in my 20s and, um, you know, Matisse, a lot of the French painters, and then I got more interested in some abstract painters, Richard Diemenkorn, a painter from the West Coast, uh, who worked both abstractly and figuratively. Um, and of course, the New York school painters from the 40s and 50s, um, de Kooning, Franz Klein, guys like that. And, uh, Helen Frankenthaler, I love her work. Um, it's like that, but so much more. It's a little bit so lyrical and uh, fluid, I think, is the word I'm looking for. I noticed a couple of your paintings that you had on uh, on the wall here at the uh, community center during your, your exhibit. What struck me was your use of color and texture. Mm -hmm. um, I was drawn in, if you will. Um, the colors were warm and inviting and familiar. Um, and I think at one point you may have described some of your painting style as being a journey that is inviting uh, the viewer to look upon your painting and to sort of uh, travel around uh, it, your work. Is yeah. that an accurate way of describing it? Or yes. How would you, how would you yeah, expand there's, on that? I think when I'm painting, you know, I, I, I'm really just thinking about how do I get from here to there in the painting. If I, I'm working on something, I maybe I'll look at a, a picture that I took in the woods or something. And that's my initial idea. And I'm trying to get some direction lines and just some form down. And then, you know, something will happen with some paint and one area will start to become very interesting to me. And it, it might look like a, a cave or something. It might be some, some movement like that. And I'll say, well, and then, you know, then this area is interesting, but I'm thinking, well, how do I get from here to here? It can't just be a flat. I know there's many, many, many contemporary painters and all kinds of painters that have big areas of flat color, and uh, which is great. But and maybe they go through through the same thought process that I do, and they just handle it differently. But I'm really concerned about how do I get from this area to this area in an interesting way and you know, it's different every time, you know, maybe it's something, some mistake happens here and then your eye goes over here, but I'm very interested in the way the eye goes through the painting. Uh, Cause if I look at a painting and I'm bored in like 30 seconds, then, then it's not, it's no good for me. I'm, I want something that I can sit there and look at for a long time. And it's even better if you look at it the next day and you, your eye goes somewhere else, and then you get to explore yes. in, the, in the painting. That's kind of how I liked looking at uh, some of Monet's work yeah. in a similar fashion. You know, right. you'd come back and look at the painting again, like the water lilies, and you see something different. The light is different. Yeah. It gives it a different perspective. Looking at your body of work and, and where you are today, do you have a sense on where you want to continue to go and evolve as a painter? I think it makes me nervous to think about it, <laughs> that in the future because I really, that? I enjoy what I'm doing now. And I've had this, I've remember you know, thinking these thoughts, like this question you're asked years ago, eight, 10 years ago. And I would think the same thing. Like, I love what I'm doing now. I don't want to do something. I don't want to, but now I, I, I can see how it, my work has evolved in the past 10 years. 
but I don't know how it will evolve. But I know that um, I'll probably enjoy doing it when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense for yeah. sure. Yeah. Let's talk about how you might perhaps influence uh, young painters, aspiring painters. Have you um, taught, assuming you have perhaps taught classes with uh, young painters? And is, I've what's that never, like? Mm -hmm. I've never taught, actually. Okay. Um, and uh, not that I wouldn't be a good teacher. I think I might be good at it. I'm, um, but I enjoy uh, having young people look at my work. I have a usually once a year and it's usually in in June uh, we have a barn behind our house here in Hingham and uh, I open it up and have a show there in the barn and lots of parents bring kids young kids in and they really enjoy looking at the the work especially the new work and they they find things I can see this and there's a I see something in there, or is that a rabbit or something like that? And I say, well, I didn't paint that, but I'm glad that you see that. And it's fun to interact with kids because they see, you know, they surprise you. They see, see things that you don't see. That's right. And um, I, I would like my work to be seen more by more people and kids especially, I think, because if they see something and it really, you know, sparks their imagination. Maybe they think to themselves, well, I remember that artist show I saw, there were really interesting paintings. Maybe I could try something like that. And to get more young people, you know, become artists uh, instead of, you know, bankers or something. Of course, we all need bankers, but uh, I think that would be a good idea. Tell me a little bit more about your studio and you mentioned opening up the barn. So is your studio actually in the barn and how often is it open to the public? It will be in the barn uh, probably in April when it's warm and warm. warm to get up there because <laughs> yes. I'm in the in the uh, cellar now, okay. which is it it's works fine. I've got the lighting set up nicely and it's the ceilings are low and but I can't do giant thing. Not that I do giant work, but there's a piece downstairs in the show that's a um, painted on an old uh, wooden door I found in the barn that's been there since we moved in. It's, I think when someone was renovating the, the barn or maybe putting a horse stall in or something, they took some old door down and it's, you know, it's 75 inches high by 29 inches wide. So it's an old, probably, you know, 19th century door, but it even looks like it could be older. It's got a funny little latch mechanism and I decided to make a painting on it and I was laughing with my friends and we thought like if it's at the Antiques Roadshow in like 50 years someone will say you've got a really great antique door. It's too bad someone made this, put this paint all over it. You know, yeah. it would be worth so, but uh, that's what we my friends tease me a lot and I tease them and we have great relationships. But the, um, that's just one example. I could never have done that door in the, in the cellar where I am now. It's, uh, it would, yeah. But that would, so when I move out to the barn, probably in April, it's, uh, it's lovely working there on the first floor of the barn. I've got everything set up um, the way I want it. I have lights, even though there's natural light, I also have lights above the easel. And um, I get a chance to do some bigger things like the door and have do more experiments and have some fun out there. And, and I do, if someone were to wander into the studio while I was painting, I would happily show them around and uh, it's very casual. And I do uh, have these shows that once, maybe sometimes twice a year, sometimes June and sometimes October, that I'll put uh, a couple of big signs on my easels out on the front lawn, right on Main Street, and it says, Artist Studio Open, you know, and uh, welcome anyone who wants to come in and uh, see my work. 
have you had occasions where as an artist three o'clock in the morning all of a sudden inspiration hits you and you jump up out of bed and you rush to the to the campus or is that just uh, um, you know a myth I don't think it's a myth because I've <laughs> I've heard that um, you know artists uh, who, who do this and you know uh, but not me I'm just when I'm in bed I'm like I'm out and uh, I work best in the morning. I really love, and it's funny because when I was a teenager and probably in my early 20s, I didn't like to get up in the morning, but as I've gotten older, you know, I don't mind getting up earlier and it's my favorite time of the day. My dad used to say that. He would say the morning is the best time of the day. And it is, it's gorgeous if you're out about in the morning. It's, yeah. uh, I, that light, that morning light is my favorite. Morgan. We live in a, what I would say, a very rich community of artists, particularly in the surrounding towns of Hingham and Hull, Cohasset, Norwell, and the like. Um, I'm familiar with a few of the artist collectives uh, in my community of Hull. We have what's called Open Doors, where this collective of artists and the tours has become very popular. Um, do you participate in similar types of artist collectives where not only are you opening up your studio, but that you're doing it in concert with other artists in, in Hingham or other surrounding towns? Well, I have timed some of my uh, shows in the barn to uh, the, uh, it is a Hingham Arts Walk. And I'm not like uh, you know, officially in on the, the in on it. Mm -hmm. Because it's so far, it's like a, you know, a two miles or something away. But uh, yeah, it's important that they're. Um, that's a great group. I I, I know a, a several artists in that, and I've actually on some of the weekends that they've had it that I have not had my own barn show. I've been down through the artist studios around on that, and um, it's exciting to see. You know, if you're normally walking around shopping in Hingham or going out to eat or something, you don't realize that you're passing by some artist studios in there. And right. I think people don't realize that. So I, it's important that they have these um, arts walks. And I know they've become more popular probably in the past 10 or 20 years all over the country. I mean, everyone has arts walks. The first Friday is this relatively yes. new thing in Boston and right. it's spread beyond Boston too. I know, uh, I was involved when I was younger in my early 20s with the South Shore Art Center in Cohasset. I took a couple of classes there uh, for a few summers while I was working too. I took some night classes, and, which that's a great place too. Um, beautiful building and beautiful galleries down there. And um, yeah, I think it is, I like going into um, to the art war walks, um, meeting other artists, and our artists are so welcoming when they hear you're an artist, you know, visiting from somewhere else, and uh, you really then get to talk shop with someone, which I think is very exciting. Because I think a lot of times we're isolated in our own studios, mm -hmm. and I it's really good for artists to to get together. So uh, you know, because of you. Uh, you, your family and you can't really talk shop with them and right. what, what do you think of this does this remind you of this Renaissance painter or, or what, what do you think of this painting they'll be like oh I really don't know what you're talking about but you, when you get together with other artists it's, uh, it's a nice thing Painting um, is such a, a challenge um, for the individual in terms of expressing themselves on canvas or some sort of medium and then subjecting themselves to the judgment of the viewer. What advice do you have for an aspiring artist, particularly in overcoming the fear of the criticism associated with their work of art? When I 
lived in New York City, I saw a show at the um, Museum of Modern Art before they moved. So this was a long time ago. And it could have been actually before I moved to New York. It could have been the late 80s before I moved to New York. And there was a Francis Bacon show. And there was a video of an interview with him. And he was asked a similar question. And he said, he said, don't let them bother you. Goes just pay no attention to what people say. You 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 do what you think. You know, um, I'm paraphrasing and I'm clumsy. I'm trying to think of the right, what he said was more eloquent. And um, but the gist of it is just don't be afraid to just say something with art. You know, and uh, if you're concerned about what how people perceive it you know everyone is naturally well, it's human nature but i think if you you know dwell on that too much you're you're kind of going to cut your creativity off you're going to turn the tap down a little bit you want it to be op open and flowing and uh, i think that to do that is just to do it for yourself it reminded me of an experience I had briefly in college. You know, you've got an opportunity to take an elective, and so I decided to take up a course in, in painting. This mm -hmm. happened to be with acrylics. And um, really no specific plan in mind other than just to just take the course, get the credit, and, and move on. Mm -hmm. But what I ended up doing was I ended up uh, rather crude, I did a painting of my two younger sisters uh, playing in the, in the backyard. And I since brought it home, left it at home, and long forgotten until it came to where we're downsizing the old homestead. Mm -hmm. Mom says, come and get your stuff that you want before. If you don't want it, it goes into the dumpster. And I got there and discovered this painting. Now, fast forward, I have a daughter, and I says, hey, look what I did way back when I was your age. And so she said, can I have it? I said, sure, you can have it. Mm -hmm. Little did I realize that today, that painting, which was done over 40 years ago, is now sitting in the bedroom of my granddaughter. So I have two granddaughters. <laughs> I mean, what are the odds right. of painting yeah. and then seeing it show up there? Yeah. So at least from a personal standpoint, I have hopes and aspirations that I could enjoy an afternoon of painting one day with my granddaughters. That'd be fun. Oh, sure. And, and that's the wonderful thing about painting. You know, with electronics, people, you know, buy the latest gadget and, you know, there are lots of money. And, you know, sometimes people think, oh, that's a painting. Gee, that's a lot of money. But then they don't realize it, it would be passed down mm. to their children, to their grandchildren, you know, if it's, you know, if it's not destroyed in a fire or something, it could be around for a couple of hundred years. We, there, there are paintings in museums that are five, six hundred years old, so you never know. Well, I doubt seriously mine will end up in a museum. You but... never know, <laughs> Joe. <laughs> well, Morgan, I want to thank you for taking this time with us today. Yeah. I've learned an awful lot about you and your work, and I'm looking forward to uh, coming out and visiting your bond when you open it up in April. Absolutely. You're more than welcome. All right. Thanks, thank you. Joe. Thank okay. you very much. Yeah.